going on to all of my Barry fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. We are back with our weekly Barry discussions breaking down this fourth and final season episode 5 which was titled Tricky Legacies. Now in this week's episode A Little House on the Barry we see a life with Barry and Sally and what it looks like with their new son John as Barry attempts to change his own tricky legacy. Meanwhile Gene returns from hiding to find Barry. There is so much to dive into in today's episode. I'm so excited to be back with you all. But first, I want to know what you liked, loved, or maybe hated about this recent episode of Barry. Let's talk about all of your pros and your cons. And of course, sharing your thoughts and your theories and your predictions of what you all hope to see in the weeks ahead in the comments below. And if you all appreciate today's breakdown, don't forget to hit the like button, share today's review, and of course, consider subscribing to the channel. We got some legacy to talk about in this fifth episode. Full spoilers ahead. We open the episode with seeing this whole new side of Barry as he's nurturing and he's a loving father and he's teaching his son a lesson about apologizing to the kid Travis who we met in last week's episode when he was getting into a fight with John about not knowing what Call of Duty was. Now we learn that video games aren't played in the Berkman household as John says the thing that he was told by his father Barry that he hopes next time they can come together and next time be in harmony. Harmony. Now, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but it sounds like something that Clark got from some type of research of someone important in history. I love the line here in this opening scene and when Clark is talking to John, you can't change other people, we can only change ourselves. That's a very meaningful line coming from Barry, now Clark, as he has completely changed himself from his previous lifestyle. But I'm kind of curious if John's temper stems more from his mom Sally or his hitman father Barry or is it a combination of both? As we get more of these lessons from Clark on being a bigger person in situations, his days of being angry went away after he figured out his way to control his emotions but more importantly after having John he became a different man. Now before we move on, are we all in agreement that their current living situation is the same similar desert area that we saw earlier in the season when Barry was having those flashbacks? Is it safe to assume that this is exactly where Barry was raised? And am I to take it that maybe Barry was also homeschooled and maybe his father was a stay-at-home dad with his kids and he taught them everything that Barry is teaching John? Let me know if you all were thinking the same thing in the comments below. As father and son time goes on, we cut to Sally, aka Emily, doing her makeup and applying a wig on, which she didn't take off, by the way, this entire episode, besides the bathroom scene that we'll talk about a little bit later. As she's leaving for work, we see her watching John and also Clark, who is just fully hooked and fascinated on watching his video on Abraham Lincoln, and you look at the look on her face. To me, this was a look of being maybe fed up, or maybe she was unimpressed, or maybe, just maybe, she's jealous maybe she's upset because she can't stay at home to raise their son which by the way we will be discussing Sally aka Emily being a mother a little bit later in today's video but I want to be honest with you all here for a second now normally I'm not the biggest fan of time jumps in movies and shows for example sticking on HBO I was a big fan of House of the Dragons it was one of my favorite shows last year but one of my biggest issues with the show and yes I know it's based on novels but there were so many many times for those that have seen House of the Dragon there were so many times in that show that we would skip years ahead and there was so much off-screen relationships and off-screen developments that I wish we could have seen now correlating it to Barry we have fast forwarded eight years and I have so many questions where are they exactly? Who did they call to get these new identities and social security numbers? Did they have John at a hospital? And if so, were there any questions about who his parents actually were? How are they living? Are they living off of Sandy's wages at the diner? Did Barry go and get a secret stash of cash that he had from all his days of being a hitman? What have the last eight years been like for them? 
I just want to know. But again, like I said, normally I would not be a fan of this, but the brilliance of this episode, as we'll continue to break down, there was so much nuance in the conversations and the behavior of these characters that it was given to me in a sense of it was able to fill in those gaps. Now, again, I'll get to it. I do have other questions, but that's the brilliance of this episode. They were able to do such a good job of giving us these character moments that I was able to kind of understand what the last eight years have looked like for these characters. But I want to know in the comments, do you all have a sense of like you would have liked to had seen some of that off-screen stuff happen or are you okay with how the story unfolded now back to the breakdown we see emily hasn't thrown away her acting career as she's now playing emily which some might consider to be the role of her life as she's this runaway actor with her barry who escaped from prison now they have this son and she's a waitress at a diner she has this southern accent where she gets to steal cash from the cash register now i might be jokingly saying that character description is this episode but in all seriousness the brilliance from sarah goldberg and her performance in this episode as sally was just so amazing to me because like sally the character she was playing almost dual roles as sally and emily in this episode because it was almost like there was a switch between the two where there were moments in this episode that i gathered that she cared at points about barry about john about maybe her situation but then she would go back in the character and almost seem like she hated everything Everything that was going on so I really appreciated the little nuances and all the little things that we got in her performance in this episode was nothing short of just phenomenal as we see Emily talking to another employee who seems to be a good friend of hers at work at this diner by the name of Tina we see that Tina invites Emily to this family gathering now we get a sense of the lies that Emily has to come up with or if you ask Sally this is just character backstory for Emily as she tells Tina she can't attend this family gathering because Clark's mom she lives with them and she's hooked up to all these machines so initially I thought that this was just maybe Emily's job for the last eight years and she's just used to these people but the more I think about it, you would imagine that Tina has probably invited her to other events, so that seemed like a brand new conversation between those two characters, which makes me then think, wait a minute, maybe Emily and Clark and John, they might move around from town to town every couple months or every couple years when people start to question their lifestyle, or maybe Emily just hops around from job to job once people start to question what she does at home. But speaking of Emily, she's got a big fan out there. His name is Berthel, who let's just say he likes to pressure himself when he thinks about Emily, and we will be talking about him a little bit later in this episode. But I want to talk about something with you all, and that is speaking on the differences of parenting between Emily and Clark. Now it could be me, but Clark appeared to be more interested and more invested in parenting and teaching John to be a good person, whereas Emily was more interested in being drunk and drinking vodka straight out of the bottle. As we have this conversation on the phone about John's future, with him being homeschooled and them circumstances, Clark doesn't believe that this would prevent their son from becoming a lawyer like Abraham Lincoln. Now, we gotta be honest with each other, their circumstances are pretty unique considering the fact that Barry broke out of jail and John's mom would along with this into hiding with him now taking a moment to actually talk about sally and in particularly her being a mother it didn't really seem like she was trying to be a positive influence on John's life and that maybe she initially thought that being a mom and being married or potentially, I don't even know if they're married, but being in this relationship with Barry turned out to be something entirely different than what she initially thought. And going back to just the parenting style, maybe Barry took the way that he was raised and applied it to John versus how we saw the relationship between Sally and her mom and maybe she's just doing exactly what her mom did to her. Let me know what you all thought about her parenting in this episode and the difference between the two in the comments below. As we cut to the dinner scene where Emily is completely drunk, she gives young John her thoughts on compromising in life, which I definitely think was a dig at Barry, and Abraham's Lincoln and his importance to being on the penny. It makes you wonder how often that she comes home to being drunk and making these five-star chicken pot pie dinners, which I feel so bad for young John. It was all frozen and disgusting looking. As I digress, we hear Emily and Clark arguing outside about her being a drunk 
drunk in front of John, and we see John wakes up and hears his argument outside of his room. As we get a little insight on how Clark and Emily spend their nights together as they are on their separate computers, and they kind of look miserable and all content at the same time, as we see Clark is listening to Abraham Lincoln and how he wasn't exactly perfect in some of the terrible things that he did in his past. Meanwhile, Emily's watching the hit TV show from Natalie Just Desserts, as we get this really important scene that speaks to Sally's frame of mind. Now, in the episode she's watching, Natalie's character is talking about marriage and comparing them to a bag of jelly beans, where at first it's amazing, you got these different flavors, until you come across the black licorice, and no one likes that. Now, connecting that to what Sally may be thinking in this moment, I'm going to live this life with this man who protects me and we'll have this kid together and we'll live this happily ever after life. But then in reality, it became that black licorice. As we cut to the next morning, we see the family is watching this sermon on their computers and they're feeling good. They're feeling honored and thankful. And I'll be honest, I never took Sally and Barry to be the religious type, but hey, that's who they are now. This is all part of the act of the new Berkman 2.0 family. But for some reason, it didn't hit me into watching this scene. Barry's a fugitive. He's a wanted man on the run. He can never leave the house because he can risk getting caught. He can't go to church with his family. He can't go to the grocery store. He can't even buy his son a comfort at Walmart because he could risk getting caught and losing this lifestyle that he's created. And speaking of this lifestyle, we have more of the conversation between Clark and John and them bonding together as they're discussing being thankful and honoring what God has given them. We see John brings up how much his mom cried and this is where Clark kind of drifts off in the conversation as John watches all these kids playing catch and he makes a new friend who plants the idea and plants the seed about him learning how to play baseball but more importantly this new friend plants the idea and the seed of him doing something much different from the routine and the lessons from his father Barry. As we get a better understanding of how they live their day-to-day -day lives from the mail, we see a funny moment, but at the same time, a sad moment where John just wanted a comforter because he gets cold at night in his bedroom. And in a roundabout way, we see Clark telling him no as he talks about the story about Jesus and the fish and ultimately told him that he didn't need the comforter, which I thought was kind of funny when he was saying it. But then him also saying that he wants the comforter versus actually needing a comforter. Meanwhile, the hypocrisy of Clark, he didn't need the that Abraham Lincoln book, but he still got it. But speaking of feeling bad, we see Clark finds the glove that John's new friend gave him, and Clark scares the hell out of John by showing him these kids getting hurt playing baseball, and even one of the videos showed a kid dying playing baseball. Again, Clark is so set on keeping John in line, but also afraid of him wanting to have new experiences and maybe questioning why he can't play Call of Duty, why he can't play baseball like the other kids. And in his mind, he thinks he's protecting John, but in reality, he's just creating a younger version of himself. As we get another example of Emily not really being attached to John as a loving mother, as John wakes up in the middle of the night because he's terrified of what Clark showed him, and he has Emily lay in bed with her, but she's not really comforting him or telling him a good bedtime story. Instead, she gives him like this little pat on the shoulder and just turns the opposite way and falls asleep. Now, giving her some credit, she did go as far as sleeping with him to make sure he was okay for the night, but still, I can't shake the feeling that she almost has one foot in and one foot out as she might have been again doing something that her mom might have did when she was younger and when she was afraid at night but going back to my one foot in one foot out let's talk about her doing more of her Emily impersonations and pretending to actually have some emotion we see Berthel shoots his shot with Emily as they grab a drink together notice that this man child is drinking chocolate milk as they talk about him being a bad boy and he claims to have shot some fools back in the day as we see Emily invites him to the bathroom and we get this very awkward very uncomfortable and weird scene they're kissing at first and then all of a sudden we see that she begins to choke him he accidentally kind of pulls her wig off she slaps him he says that he's sorry but she knows he didn't really mean that and let's talk about this scene now I personally believe if you all have been following my breakdowns there's a darkness in side of Sally and we saw that back from last season when she killed that biker and just continuously having these anger blowout moments 
I think that she was going to actually kill him in a scene, but it wasn't until he pulled off her wig and it was almost as if he exposed her for who she really is, which is Sally and not Emily. And you can even hear in the scene, she actually lose her accent in that bathroom. So again, I think she would have killed him until she was exposed to be who she really is, which is Sally. Now, this next scene to me perfectly sums up Barry's new life as we watch him tell this story about him being in the Marines to his young son, John. Now, Clark reveals to John that he was in the Marines and how some people even consider him to be a hero as we have this beautifully shot scene at dinner of the continuation of Clark's research of Abraham Lincoln as he has concluded it because, again, he found out all these horrific and terrible things that Abraham Lincoln had did and he actually brings in Gandhi's hypocritical nature when he talks about all the stuff that Gandhi did and his religion and how he didn't use medicine for his wife but he used it for himself and this is where we get the title of the episode because we see Clark calls out the tricky legacies now Thinking about this for a brief moment to the berry of it all, talking to John about his time of being a Marine and how he was considered to be a hero. Which, yes, there is some truth to that, but just like he mentioned, both Abraham Lincoln having done some good things in the past, as well as Gandhi, Clark also forgot to mention what happened after, with him becoming a hitman killing machine and escaping prison. This is the focus of the episode. What does Barry want to be remembered for? This is a story he wants to tell, his side, his story. As we end the episode with a knock at the door surprising both Sally and Barry, we get the return of Barry who gets his gun behind this hidden painting and he is prepared to kill again for his family. And you remember why Sally went off with Barry because she feels safe with him as we see Barry tells them to go to the bathtub as he answers the door and no one's there and I just assume it was some kids just pranking them because they're out in the middle of nowhere. And this is the moment that was such a great character moment for me because I almost took it as maybe Barry came up with this name Clark because he thinks he's Superman and stick with me here in my kind of comparison no one if you know Superman's story no one ever suspects Clark Kent to be this man with glasses this cool calm and demeanor of being this Kryptonian superhero same could be said about Clark being this killing machine also known as Barry as we see John and Emily slept in the bathtub all night long as we cut to Clark stayed up all night outside in the exact same spot just to protect his family. You have to put in perspective that Barry, not Clark, still believes there are people looking for him. Maybe he thinks that Hank's looking for him or Fuchs or maybe even Jim and this is something that he maybe constantly lives with and why he has this isolated lifestyle because he wants to protect his family. I wasn't anticipating catching up with any other characters in this episode, but cut to LA as we see a trailer playing Mega Girls Part 4 coming to theaters in September, so one would assume that Kristen is now the big megastar that Sally always wanted to be, as we see an older Jean rocking a Jesus look and he's come to talk to the head of WB. Now it's been known that Jean went missing and thought to be dead for 8 years, but he says that he was just out of the country, as he knows WB wants to make a movie about about Barry's story and Jean has come out of hiding. Now I believe he knew that Barry would come out of hiding as well and Barry is no longer a someone that Jean is afraid of. Now back to Emily at work we learn that Bertha was fired after his encounter with Emily and she even blames him for stealing the money from the cash register and just for some extra measure we know that she has no guilty conscience of the situation. As we end the episode with Clark talking to John about the Albert story and how again he would do anything to protect John just like he did Albert but more importantly in the scene John tells him something that we've never heard be said to Barry throughout this entire series and it was an honest moment it had care it had integrity and it had meaning behind it we see John tells his father that he loved him go back to all the episodes of this show and in particularly this season what has Barry been seeking? That's love. He wanted love from Gene, from Sally, from even Fuchs at times, but they never gave it back to him. So you can just tell how much someone saying that they loved him meant to Barry in this scene. As we see what he's willing to do for his loved ones, 
Emily's watching a Natalie interview about how influential her show has been on a generation. She gets an alert from Google and it says Barry Berkman as she yells Barry's name for the first time in this entire episode. She shows him that WB is indeed making a biopic about Barry Berkman and Gene will be a consultant on this project goes back to someone telling his story as we saw with the episode of the journalist when he told Barry that Gene was telling his side of the story and we saw Barry's reaction was to tell Gene to shut his mouth. Well, Barry doesn't want John to one day see this movie and find out the terrible things that Barry did just like what happened when Barry found out the truth about Abraham Lincoln's legacy, which is such a great callback to the central theme of this episode. But in seriousness, I wonder how long Sally and Barry thought that they were going to plan on keeping John separated from the world and finding out the truth about his parents. But going back to it all and ending this episode, we see Clark must go back to killer Barry mode and he must kill gene the end of a fantastic episode of barry but going back to my questions what has gene been doing the last eight years i would assume that he left the country because he was so afraid of barry and him killing him and finding him and all that different stuff but i also wonder did he know that his son has died is his son dead when he shot him that night in last week's episode not sure why the police wouldn't be questioning Gene if his son is dead, but let's talk about some other characters that were not mentioned in this episode, starting off with Noho Hank. Is it safe to assume that he's built his empire with him now running LA? Is Fuchs in jail? Did he has his gang? Is he out of jail? Is he maybe working for Noho Hank? So many questions, and I can't wait to find out, but giving you all just my general thoughts after watching this episode, this was such a great character focus and character-driven episode and I loved it the more I watched it each time before I was recording this very video. Now, like I said, I do not like off-screen development, but this episode captured those eight years from the performances almost made up for all of that stuff that I wish we couldn't got. Now again, I'm very aware these are only 30 minute episodes and the show creators have done such a great job of giving us all the important stuff. Now I still have some questions about how they were able to maneuver, what other characters have been doing and all that different stuff. But again, the idea of what the last eight years could have been between Barry and Sally was perfectly conveyed in this episode in my opinion. Now I also wanna give props to the subtle writing cues and the incredible acting in this episode and seriously, how this show has managed to totally shift from being a dark comedy to just a straight up dark drama is nothing short of phenomenal. And speaking of phenomenal, shout out to Zachary Gullinger who played John Berkman Jr. That little young actor was phenomenal in this episode. And speaking of episode, next week's episode will be titled Wizard, which may speak to Barry being a wizard and sneaking back in L.A., what will come of Jim next week? What has Hank been up to? What has Fuchs been up to? And what will happen if and when Barry finds Gene? I want to talk to you all in the comments again. What did you like, love, or maybe didn't like about this episode? Let's talk about it. And what thoughts and theories and predictions do you all hope to see in the weeks ahead? And also share the Easter eggs and things I might have missed in this breakdown in the comment section. If you all stuck around to this point in the video, do me a favor, put in the comments right now, hashtag Tricky Legacies. Thank you all for watching this review. I can't thank you enough. You're so awesome. Before you all leave, just a friendly reminder, if you enjoyed yourself, to hit the thumbs up, share this breakdown, leave your thoughts in the comments, and also consider subscribing to the channel. You all have been awesome. Hope you're staying safe. As you can see on the screen now, come and join the community. Check out all my reviews for Barry this far. Check out my most recent review, and I'll catch you all on the next breakdown.